fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hello, this is the Lone Ranger speaking. You know Americans have the reputation of being always on the go. You can see how we got that reputation when you think back on the exploits of men like Daniel Boone, Lewis and Clark, Davy Crockett, and many others. They had to cross the rivers, climb the mountains, break the trails from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Today, Americans are still full of energy. And the important thing to remember is that we are a wheat-eating nation. We eat more energy-giving wheat by far than any other grain. It's one big reason why we are still on the move exploring new frontiers. Keep on eating your wheat, and you'll be doing With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Bill Caldwell, United States Marshal, was cleaning his guns in his hotel room when someone knocked on the door. Come in. As the door opened, Bill recognized Red Dawson, the owner of Border Town's largest cafe. What's on your mind, Dawson? Your first case, Marshal. Crackers just went into the bank. Who's Crackers? Worst outlaw on the border. He's holding up the bank? Must be. And right under your nose. We saw him walk in bold as brass. And it looks to me like he waited till you got here just to show you what he thinks of a tenderfoot marshal. You'll find out what a tenderfoot from the panhandle's like. Come on. Sure thing. <laughs> Bill and Dawson hurried down the main street toward the one-story adobe building that housed the bank. There was a crowd of men standing in front of the cafe across the street. Crackers doesn't seem to mind an audience. He's too tough for those hombres to handle. His draws like lightning. There he is, coming out of the bank now. He's an old man. Don't let that fool you. It's an old rattlesnake that's the dangerous kind. Look at that sack he's carrying. He's cleaned out the bank. Hold it, Crackers. Uh, what? What's that, young fella? Hand over the sack. Hey? Your gun. And now the sack. Well, I'll be jiggered. That's a mighty high-handed way for a peace officer to act. Good work, Marshal. Now open it up. Take a look. See how much he stole. Yeah. What? Onions. Look underneath. He put them in to cover up the cash. There's nothing but onions in this sack. <laughs> What else did you expect to find, young fellow? I see. It was a joke. Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. Oh, we got to hand it to you, Marshal. You sure know how to handle a desperate criminal. That evening after supper, Crackers entered the hotel lobby and hobbled across to the corner where Bill was reading. Uh, mind if I sit a while, Marshal? Not at all. Oh, good. Hey, say, you're a kind of special lawman, young fellow. Got the United States government behind you. That's right. We heard you was coming. I'm to open an office and stick around for a while. Well, nice vacation for you. Yeah. Well, I'll be on the way. Now, just remember, I'm your friend. Good night. Good night, old timer. Crackers' next stop was Dawson's Cafe. He walked through the crowded bar room to the owner's office in the rear. He opened the door without knocking. Red looked up from his desk. As Crackers closed the door, he squared his shoulders and seemed to grow several inches. 
He began to pace the floor. What's on your mind, boss? The next shipment will be the last. As soon as it's delivered across the river, the job will be finished and we can all clear out. How soon? Only a few days. The wagons are somewhere between here and Santa Fe. Poncho will be riding ahead of them. He'll report to you. You know where the rivals are to be delivered? Sure. There's no chance of the marshal moving on and the boys moving back into town? None. He has orders to stay here. Well, let him. There are better spots in Border Town. Oh, I'm going to turn in. Don't wake me unless Poncho shows up. Right, boss. Same evening, the Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rein at the gates of the fort outside of El Paso. The sentry challenged them, and the masked man and the Indian were escorted across the dark parade ground to the colonel's quarters. The colonel welcomed them as old friends and then proceeded to business. I'm glad the padre was able to deliver my letter so soon. This matter is urgent. It concerns our relations with Mexico. And we can be of service? Indeed you can. No doubt you've heard that Gonzalez has a bandit army somewhere in the mountains north of Chihuahua. Uh, yes, sir. Well, Winchester rifles are being smuggled across the river to him. And the Mexican government has appealed to Washington to stop it. I see. Have you any idea where the rifles are crossing? Uh, yes, I'll show you on the map. Now, Gonzalez controls the Mexican bank of the river across from Border Town, this stretch here. At any other place, the Mexican Federals would intercept and contraband. Now, our idea is that the rifles come down from the north to some point in the hills on this side of the river where they're loaded on pack mules. There are any number of places where the river could be forded. Mm, that's right. So the problem is to find the reloading point in the hills. Uh, you know the country north of the river. Yes, sir. Ridge after ridge, wooded for the most part, hundreds of hidden valleys. The smugglers probably use a different reloading point for each shipment. I'm sure of it. We'd like you and Tonto to see what you can find. Why, of course, sir. But have you thought of the smugglers using Border Town itself as their headquarters? Oh, it doesn't seem likely. However, a United States Marshal has been sent there. You won't have to concern yourself with the town. Ah, very well, sir. And if we do find a camp, rifles, ammunition cases, wagons, mules... Get word back here fast. It's only a few hours' ride. I'll send a troop or as many men as are needed to round up the whole gang. We'll do our best, Colonel. Good luck. During the next week, the Lone Ranger and Tonto searched the tangled hills north of the river by day and night. Then one evening, as they were about to make camp, they heard hoofbeats. He's traveling fast, Tonto. Ah, him ride game trail. West to here. Heading north. Ah. We follow him? Yes, Tonto. Easy, 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 easy fella. Monsieur, I'm a scout. The full moon was rising, and it was an easy matter to follow the fresh hoof prints in the soft ground. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode slowly until at last they reached the top of a wooded hill. Who's the wooded hill? There were only a few trees on the floor of the valley below them. They could see a tumble down cabin. Around it, the shadowy figures of men and horses. This may be it, Toto. Ah. No way of making sure unless we get closer. At that moment, Silver whinnied. His attention had been attracted by a man lying on the ground at the foot of a tree a little farther down the trail. Their sentry seems to be sound asleep. Isn't that right? It's easy to get past him. I think we better wake him up and pretend we want to join the gang. Maybe it's plenty hard get away after. Not if we can convince them we're outlaws. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Oh, Silver. Oh, Scout. Easy. Oh, fella. Wake up there. Yeah, uh... What the... Hey, a masked man and engine. Don't get excited. We don't intend to make trouble. All we want to do is see your boss. We want to talk with him. You talk with him, all right. Ride slow down the trail ahead of me. Down to the cabin. Come on, sir. Get him up, Scott. The Lone Ranger and Tonto walked their mounts down the slope with a guard following them, his rifle at the ready. They were ordered to hit Silver and Scout to a makeshift corral at the back of the cabin, and then were marched around to the front. Open the door. Sure. Right inside. 
And remember, I got this rifle pointed at your backs. Who's there? Go on in. It's Joe Butch. Yeah, there's a couple of hombres who want to see you. Yes, we'd like to work with you. Yeah? What's your line? I know what you're working at. You do? It just happens that I have connections in Mexico, too. Uh, so you figure it's easy money and you want to cut in. The money you get from this job will take plenty of earning. Think so? There's a United States Marshal in border town now. Him? He's too stupid to know what's going on. He may want you to think he's stupid. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. I thought of that myself. I'm not exactly the head man around here. Hey, what's going on out there, Joe? Hey, wait a minute. I'll take a look. Hey, it's Pancho. The wagons are here? No, no, just a second. What's that, Pancho? The wagons are a mile or two up the north trail. It's too steep for them. I need some help to get them down. All right, come on, you two. Let's see what you know about snaking a wagon down a grade. As the excited outlaws clustered around Pancho with eager questions about the wagons, the Lone Ranger and Tonto edged their way to the corner of the cabin. They slipped around it and ran for the corral and back. Silver and Scott were unhitched. They leaped to the saddle. Get him up. Then, hidden from the outlaws by the cabin, they raced across the level valley toward the cover of the wooded slope. It seemed only a few seconds later that they heard shouts behind them. The outlaws had discovered they were trying to escape. They opened fire. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Say, I'll bet everyone in your gang loves a chocolate malt, right? Who doesn't? Well, here's a real treat you can plan. Sometime soon, invite the gang over for a chocolate malt, and then surprise them with a Betty Crocker chocolate malt cake mix cake. Imagine all the excitement when they taste their favorite flavor in a cake. A big, delicious, I think you're the best gang in the world kind of cake. You see, Betty Crocker has put real malted milk right in the mix. It's the first chocolate malt cake mix ever. And it's so easy, Mom will have fun baking it. Or you can bake one yourself. Just add water and two fresh eggs. That's all. For a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. Bake up Betty Crocker's chocolate malt cake mix soon. It's the newest taste in cakes. Now to continue. The outlaws opened fire on the Lone Ranger and Tonto too late. They reached the cover of the wooded slope in safety. The gang realized that pursuit was useless and turned their attention to the wagons. By the time crackers reached the valley two hours later, they were being unloaded. Oh, oh there. Oh, steady. Hiya, boss. Uh, so they got here. Boss, something happened a while back. Maybe I should tell you about it. Uh, what? A couple of owl hoots showed up. Joe stopped them at the top of the ridge and brought them down here. They wanted to see you. Wanted to join up with us. Uh, where are they? Well, they must have changed their minds. What? Poncho rode in just then. He wanted some help with the wagons and... Well, these two hombres took off while I was talking to Poncho. Uh, who were they? One of them was an Indian, the other wore a mask. Yep. Oh, you fool. Did you ever hear of the Lone Ranger? Well, sure, but I... Leaping cactus. No. And the Lone Ranger will bring troops here. And these rifles came from the arsenal at Santa Fe. We better leave them here. Make our getaway while there's still time. Not by a hoot and holler, we won't. When did he leave? About two hours ago. And there's still time to get him across the river. It's a long ride from the fort. We'll start for the river in one hour. That's impossible. You'd better make it possible or I'll tan your hide. The marshal had ridden along the river trail east of Bordertown that night, stopping at each of the fords and looking for signs of a recent crossing. He was returning to town when he heard someone riding toward him. Get him. He on. drew off the trail into the shelter oh, of some cottonwoods, and a moment later, the rider flashed by. It was Red Dawson. Shortly after passing the marshal, he turned off the main trail to the left. 
The marshal waited for a few minutes before following him. Get up. Come on. The trail Red had taken was overgrown and climbed uphill and down. The marshal rode slowly. At last, he reached the top of a wooded ridge. Oh, oh there. Easy, boy. He dismounted a little below the crest and climbed the rest of the way on foot. The sight of the activity in the valley surprised him, and he stepped out into the open. Hey, there. That's fine enough. Oh. You're covered. Joe, huh? the guard whirled as he heard his name. Oh. The Lone oh. Ranger's fist connected solidly with his jaw, and the sentry dropped to the ground. Thanks, mister. It's all right, Marshal. But you're masked. Don't you belong to this crew? No. Colonel Holmes asked me. Oh, wait a minute. To... I know who you are. They told me he was trying to get in touch with you. Is this the outfit we're looking for? This is the outfit. Those wagons you see down there just arrived. They're loading the rifles on mules. They'll be starting for the river soon. And there's no time to warn the fort. My friend Tonto left for the fort over an hour ago. We may be able to keep those rifles on this side of the river until the troops get here. We? Just you and me? If we start shooting, the mules will be on our side. The first thing to do is make sure this sentry doesn't give away our position. We'll tie him up and gag him. It took well over an hour to load the rifles and the ammunition on the mules' backs. When they started up the ridge, however, the Lone Ranger and the marshal opened fire. The mules stopped in their tracks and the drivers took to cover. Red! I'm right here. Red, you take five men. You take another five, Butch. Keep to the trees on either side of the trail and work your way to the top. Get rid of those coyotes. What for? Hurry up! Cracker's orders were obeyed, but the men took their time in making the ascent. And when they reached the top, the shooting had ceased, and Joe the sentry was the only man they found. The Lone Ranger and the Marshal had run to their horses, mounted and ridden away to take up their stand beyond the next ridge to the south. Butch removed the gag from Joe's mouth as Crackers called up to them. All clear up there! All clear! Uh, All right, get those mules going. Uh, I had the Marshal covered, then the masked man hit me. Marshal and the masked man, what about the Indian? Well, I, I heard them talking. He's on his way to the fort. Keep this trail clear so we don't have to stop the train again. You hear me? Right. Yeah, yeah, all right. The Lone Ranger and the Marshal were waiting at the top of the next rise and stopped the train for another 15 minutes. Steady, easy. Then once more, the Lone Ranger and the Marshal were forced to retreat. Only as far as the next ridge, though. There they made another stand. They defended each ridge between the valley and the river. But finally, they were racing down the last slope and drew rein behind a cluster of boulders on the banks of the stream. There's enough cover for us here, but not for the horses. There'll be enough if we make them lie down. Down, Silver, down. The great white horse obeyed his master's command at once and lay down in the sand at the very edge of the water. Down, Blackie. Then the marshal's mount was persuaded to follow his example. Now the masked man and the lawman were ready to defend their last stronghold. Sure they'll try to use this ford? There isn't another for over a mile in either direction. I'm running low on ammunition. I have some. We should be able to stop them here for half an hour. Well, then what if the troops aren't here yet? Then we'll have to stop them for another half hour. The moon silvered the hill that rose above the river, but the slope was covered with tangled undergrowth, and the mule train's advance guard wasn't mounted. It was only by the faint movement of the bushes and the deep grass that they gave away their position as they started down the hill. That was enough for the Lone Ranger and the Marshal, and they opened fire. Half an hour passed. The guns of both the Marshal and the Masked Man were blistering hot. Their ammunition was running low. As they loaded for the last time, they exchanged a glance. We better save these last rounds until they try to rush us. Think they'll wait long? Not after we stop shooting. Nor did they. When the outlaw's fire wasn't returned, Cracker shot it down from the top of the hill. Six shots apiece, Marshal. Let's make them count. And then? Uh, then we take to the river with our horses and swim downstream. There's a chance we can get away. Here they come. 
Their last volley stopped the outlaw's charge, and six of the renegades were hit. The Lone Ranger and the Marshal, still protected by the boulders, made ready to lead their mounts into the stream. All right, come on, Silver. Get up, boy. Get, Get up. up, Blackie. They would make poor targets in the water, but still the moon was bright. It was their only chance to escape, however. And then... They stopped at the water's edge. Mister, could it be? I think so, Marshal. We held out just long enough. But I don't see any troops coming down the river trail. Not down the trail. They heard our shooting. And they crossed the ridge. They're coming down the slope behind the mule train. The Lone Ranger and the Marshal were defenseless. But the sight of the troops made the outlaws forget them completely. For the next ten minutes, the banks of the river echoed with shouts and shots and the shrill braying of the mules. Finally, the last shot was fired, and all the outlaws who had survived the fight were herded together. The colonel inspected the contraband rifles. Army Winchester, sir? Every one of them. These men will go to federal penitentiary for 20 years. They'll spend the rest of their lives in jail. There isn't one of them who isn't wanted for at least one other crime somewhere in the West. You have your prisoners and your evidence, colonel. You don't mind if Todd and I leave you now? Not at all. You've done a fine job. You have my hearties, thanks. And mine. Give my congratulations to the troop, Colonel. Easy said it, big fellow. Adios. Goodbye, Goodbye Mr. Come on, Mr. You know, Colonel, when I was assigned to this case, I thought it was too much to ask of one man, and I started out by acting like a real tenderfoot. I'd hate to tell you what a fool that outlaw leader made of me. But I reckon I can forget it. And other people will, too, when I tell them I fought off 20 or 30 men for three hours. What? <laughs> and, Colonel, if their eyebrows start climbing up to the skies like yours, maybe I'll tell the whole truth. That I had the great honor and privilege of fighting by the side of the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.